Okay, so this is part two of the video that I had earlier. This is more in detail about um, the medical part of MEPS. Now, the medical part of MEPS, um, of course, I'm going to be giving you, the, for the most part, the female perspective of it. But for guys, for the, the only difference is that you pee in front of a guy instead of a girl for your analysis. Um, okay, so as soon as you're done going to, to the service liaison and all that, you all go into a room together, men and female, or male and female, go into a room together that talks about, or they talk to you about um, the medical process. And you pretty much get a medical briefing. Um, as soon as you go in, they take your blood pressure, you sit down, they write down your paper, um, you're briefed by someone that was either prior service or in the service. My guy was a Navy guy for 25 years, and he worked with a lot of Marines. Um, I'm assuming he was a corpsman of some sort. Whatever the case may be, you have um, a folder that's given to you. It's a bunch of paperwork, and the folders are in different colors. So that way, it's not hard to confuse them. They come in orange, green, yellow, brown. I mean, different colors. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just so it's not hard to find your file when you give it to whoever you have to. Now, in that file, you're going to have it with you throughout the whole medical processing. Now, this file has a bunch of questions you answer yes or no to. Ladies and gentlemen, be honest in everything. If you're afraid about something that you might reveal, keep in mind that they will find out it is the government. They will go into your medical files, and chances are there's a waiver for it if it qualifies for a waiver. And there are tons and tons of waivers for different things, different circumstances. So um, just be honest, 100%. Um, the other thing I could tell you guys is that when you go in there, you're going to find a breathalyzer or a plastic tube. You do take a breathalyzer while you're there. Um, if you're over 21, like me, I'm 23, like I told you guys, don't drink. Don't drink at all. Don't get drunk for the week before. I, just don't drink, okay? If you're under 21, don't drink, period, okay? Uh, you take the breathalyzer, um, they go over your slide, a slideshow for the most part, explaining you how to fill it out. You will not fill out the paperwork alone. The person that's in that room will guide you through it. If you have any questions, wait until they ask you. When you are there the whole time, make sure you answer yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir, okay? Be polite, have good etiquette. On top of everything, um, pay close attention, okay? Don't fall asleep. You will get your head chewed off if you fall asleep or even think about falling asleep. Uh, throughout the medical process, like I said, someone guides you through it and explains the questions to you. After you've done the briefing, you're there about an hour, an hour and a half, you're briefed via the medical brief, and then you split up. Um, you get your blood work done, uh, then ladies go into a separate room and section of the building and the males do. Ladies, um, you will go through blood work, you vision, vision test, hearing test, um, the urinalysis. For the men, uh, the urinalysis, you will sit there and pee in front of a guy. Um, and the reason you do it is because to make sure that you're not using somebody else's pee, it has to, they have to make sure it's your pee, okay, that it's your urine. Um, you will pee in front of somebody and they will do a test right then and there. Uh, you pee in a plastic container about this big. Half of that is taken to, half of that is our tests are done right then and there. The other half is shipped to a state somewhere up north that does a very more thorough and detailed urinalysis. Um, like I said, ladies, you will pee in front of a female. If you have any shame, you better throw it out the window, okay? Because when you go to boot camp, you will not be able to shave for the most part. You, Your hygiene, I mean, you have to be clean, don't get me wrong. But, like, you know, tweezing your eyebrows, all that goes out the window. And you are bathing and have no privacy and are, for the most part, peeing and you doing your business and everything and showering in front of other females with no privacy. Um, I don't know how other branches work, but you have to earn the right to have the privacy, like, uh, whether it be a curtain or, or whatever the case may be. So suck it up and deal with it, okay? Get used to it. A lot of girls there are were you know, 18, 17, 19. They weren't they had they were embarrassed. Get over it and get over it quick. Cause you'll be in front of a bunch of other girls. We all have the same parts, okay? So just get over it. Um the blood work, like I said, is done by a either female or male, but after that you're when you separate into your rooms, you're only dealing with personnel of the same gender. Females some of the things that you will be doing is you got to make sure that you're a female, all that. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. And you will also have um do the duck walk and all those um tests with the group of girls all together. You will get you will be for the most part in that room in your bra and underwear. And when it comes to underwear, some girl was in there and 
she had sheer panties. Please wear gra granny style panties if you have to. Cotton panties, okay? No boy shorts, none of that. We do not want to see any of that, okay? Uh, it was just really weird. Just her, her ass was hanging out. I did not need to see that, but um, make sure you wear the attire that you're supposed to. Um, you will get weighed in your bra and panties, and everything is done in your bra and panties. The only test that's not done where you have to be fully naked and in a, in a disposable, I guess, medical robe is, or hospital robe or whatever, is when you go in in a separate room, just you by yourself, and you sit down with the female doctor, whoever it is that's there, and they check you, make sure everything's good, go over an interview with you, medical interview. Um, like I said, just be honest about it. It's a long process, depending how many girls are there. That day that I was there, there were 17 girls. It was a long day. It, everyone was all over the place, and it was very confusing for many people. Just follow directions. A lot of girls that were there were trying to, I guess, um, were trying to keep themselves from going right away into the room. They were stalling. Okay, here's my thing with that. Common sense. If you get your medical part done out of the way, do it. Why? Well, think about it. If you get the medical part out of the way, you get processed quicker. If you get processed quicker, you get to go see your service liaison quicker. You get to see your service liaison quicker. The person that sits with you picks a job. You get to pick the jobs that are available quicker before anybody else. You have dibs on that. So why would you delay your time from getting to the service liaison? Just get it done out of the way. That's what I did. Okay? Get over any fears you have when it comes to showing your body. I'll get over it. We all have the same thing. Okay? Suck it up and deal with it. That it will be your motto throughout the whole process. Suck it up and deal with it, okay? When it comes to getting processed, your last name will be next. When I mean next, if they say so-and-so next or next person, you run and you go try to get next. Don't wait for somebody to tell you to go, okay? The people that are there have been there before you have. It's a long day. It's a long process. Everyone wants to get out of the way. After you go through medical um, and do your hearing test, vision test, and all that, some of you ladies have questions about the depth perception test. The depth perception test is only, not everyone takes it. For example, I didn't take it. Some girls with me took it. It depends on what jobs you want to get. For the most part, if you're trying to get an aviation job, you have to take the depth perception test. You will take a test that determines if you're colorblind or not. I mean, so many tests, get, it done, get them done out of the way so you can move the process longer, uh, move the, make the process less, you know, less longer. You could just move it, speed it up along and get it out of the way and get closer to signing your contract and all that. Now, when you, um, they go over your, pro your profile. For the most part, while you're getting processed and they're reviewing it to see if you qualify to join the military or not, um, you're probably eating lunch. When you come back down, if you're not processed yet, you sit and wait. They give you your file. You go to the service liaison. You wait. Wait. It's a waiting game. It's a hurry up and wait game. Um, you will wait to get processed or wait till you get called in. They go over a bunch of paperwork. Um, I have four tattoos, so I had to wait for it to, it to be approved. Once it got approved, I sat down with my services on, picked my job, my shipping date. Uh, you process. After you're done, everything's good to go. You go to the job interview. After you pick your job and your ship out date, you go to the job interview. They take your, your fingerprints, go over paperwork. You sign paperwork. You do a biometrical signature for everything. Biometrical meaning with your finger, your uh, right index finger. And um, you sit down and wait. You take the oath. And when you take the oath, you put your arm up like this. Okay, and hold on. And you read the oath with you and a bunch of group of people that are in a different branch that you are, and you um, have officially finished for the most part the process of getting into your branch. So congratulations. Um, before you would take take this oath or um, to join in and swear in, you are taught to um, stand at attention and parade stand. They will teach you that before you go in. So good luck to you. Congratulations on joining. Thank you for what you are doing.